Yo, brawlers, this is your man, Glass Chin, and you're watching Glass Chin's Boxing. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Yo, brawlers, so it's time for my Tony Yoka versus Martin Bacoli prediction. They meet on the 14th of May in Paris. I've been putting this prediction off for a little while, as I'm really not sure how this fight plays out. But one thing is for sure, I wouldn't be shocked if this ends up as a heavyweight fight of the year contender. This has the makings of a great classic fight. I've enjoyed going back and watching some of their fights in preparation for this video. Martin Bacoli is such an entertaining heavyweight to watch, he really doesn't get enough credit. If you haven't seen Martin Bacoli vs Michael Hunter, please go and watch it. It's a very underrated fight, it reminds me of a Riddick Bowe vs Evander Holyfield. That fight was all action from the opening bell, they fought at a high tempo and barely held at all. Speed and movement was the key for Hunter in that fight, and he beat Bacoli at his own game, up close and personal. They met in the centre of the ring and traded bombs. Hunter showed an amazing chin in that fight, but probably took a couple of years off of his career, taking them absolute haymakers that Bacoli was throwing. Bacoli has a great jab, has shown fast hand speed, and he can box at times, putting together great combinations. But he's very much a brawler, his style is very crude at times. He's happy to just walk forward and swing away. He likes being in a dogfight. Imagine Bacoli versus Joe Joyce, what a shootout that fight would be. When people say, talk about fighting in a phone box, that's all they would need. No chess match involved there, just swing away at each other until one man falls. Bacoli versus Chisora would be another great fight, even a slugger like Jerry Forrest. If Bacoli loses on the 14th of May, there's still some great matchups out there for him. You have to make Tony Yoka the favourite, but Bacoli is definitely live in this fight and the toughest opponent Yoka has faced today. If Yoka isn't the real deal, then he could get found out in this fight. Yoka could go to sleep, make no mistakes about that, brawlers. Bacoli is still only 28 years old and hasn't probably come into his prime yet. But it does feel like he's been around for ages. The 6 foot 6, 260 pound Scotland based Conglanese fighter is now 17 and 1 with 13 knockouts. His best career wins were against Sergei Kuzman and Marius Wack, stopping the granite chinned Wack in the 8th round after 13 unanswered punches. The 6 foot 7, 240 pound 2016 Olympic gold medal winner Tony Yoka is currently 11 and 0 with 9 knockouts to his name. He beat the 15 and 0 Peter Melas last time out with a 7th round TKO victory. Yoka's record is stacked for talent with wins over Christian Hammer, Johan Duapas, Michael Wallish, Alexander Demonchenko, Jonathan Rice, Dave Allen and Travis Clark. All great wins for a fighter who is only 11-0 in his pro career. Now don't get me wrong brawlers, none of them fighters were top level and most weren't in their primes. But for a prospect moving up, what great learning fights Yoka has had along the way. The only negatives I have of Yoka, he has been a pro for 5 years now and has only had 11 fights. By contrast, the 2012 Olympic gold medal winner Antti Joshua was 22-0 at this stage and had seven world title fights to his name. Yoka still does have time on his side. He is only 30 years old now, still younger than British Olympians Joe Joyce and Fraser Clark were when they turned over to the pro game. I like Yoka's style. He's very precise and measured in everything he does. He sets traps very well and he finds the gaps in his opponent's defence, both to the body and the head. He's so agile and graceful while doing it. This is going to be a problem for Bacoli who has a leaky defence at the best of times. Michael Hunter, although not a huge puncher, had no trouble in finding a target against Bacoli, gradually breaking him down round after round. Problems for Yoka in this fight are that Bacoli is a very big guy who hits very hard. Bacoli, even for his size, has stamina to keep a high tempo and punching volume even into the later rounds. Yoka's chin is an unknown entity. His fights have always been very one-sided, barely losing a round. It'll be interesting to see how he responds if Bacoli turns this into a dogfight. Yoka is a ring general and controls fights on the front foot. He doesn't waste anything. If Yoka keeps to his boxing and isn't drawn in to Bacoli's style of fighting, this could be a very easy night for Yoka. Bacoli has fast hands. He at times throws pit a pit a tap tap shots before whipping in a big punch, which can catch his opponents off guard, but I think Yoka is too clever and too schooled a fighter to fall into them traps. Biggest problem for Bacoli is he has slow, plodding footwork. He can struggle with good movers. With Yoka's speed, movement and superior boxing ability, I have to pick Yoka to win this one. Yoka can be flat-footed at times, but as I said, he's very measured. He judges the gap very well on the front foot and can count on the back foot when he needs to. Bacoli has a good chin, but his defence is too leaky for an accurate puncher like Yoka. So will Yoka get the stoppage? Well, that all depends on what Yoka turns up. If Yoka fights reserved, and he's happy to coast to a points win, then it's unlikely he would land a one-punch knockout. But if Yoka comes in full confidence and sets traps that he's known for, and takes risks in this fight, then I think there's a good chance that he will break Bacoli down and stop him in the second half of the fight. Maybe round eight, maybe seven, 
It will be a big statement if he does, but I think Joker is good enough to do it. I really rate Joker, but how big a favourite do I make him? Well, that's a tough one, Brawlers. It's really hard to say as Joker hasn't been tested yet. He hasn't put a foot wrong since turning pro. It's all been pretty much one-way traffic. Joker will have to take some shots in this fight. This is a step up in level, and you can't take a bath without getting wet, as they say. Bacoli is a warrior and will be dangerous for the full 10 rounds. Bacoli isn't a fighter at the end of his career coming for a payday. He's coming to win and position himself towards a world title fight. How will Yoko respond if it comes on top and he has to start biting down on his gum shield to get through some hard rounds? We know Bacoli is ready for war and has a great chin. So I'd maybe make Yoko a 60-40 favourite, 65-35 at best. I don't want to be too hard on Martin Bacoli as he is live in this fight and I wouldn't be shocked if he did win. If Yoko does a number on him, then I am in no doubt that Yoko deserves a place in the top 10 heavyweights. So, my final prediction, Yoko to win by late TKO victory. What do you think, Brawlers? Do you agree with me? I'll put a poll up on my community page so you can vote on this fight and who you think wins. You Brawlers still haven't got one wrong yet, so well done to yous. Don't miss this fight, Brawlers. I think it's going to be a great one. I will do a review video afterwards. So, as always, Brawlers, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video.